Backs up a little bit on the bat. Shows the bunt again. Gets it down, and that's going to do the job. Oh, the throw to first inside and by Sogard. Davis scores, and Martin's going to head all the way to third. And that throw wide of the bag picked up by Adamas. And Baltimore picks up the first run. Well, Martin does lay the bunt down in the 3-1 count. Wondered if he was swing. He would not. Here comes Wendell. Choi's out of the play, so Sogard covering, and Wendell well, just doesn't get into that throw. Ball kind of up and away. Sogard, he's kind of limited with the runner there. He's not able to flag it down, and then Richie Martin. That ball getting out into no man's land. His speed takes him all the way to third. Davis scores an ugly, ugly inning so far here for the Rays defense. See Martin scampering all the way to third. A little conversation going on over there. I mean, Martin wound up at third, and I didn't see any other infraction that would uh, cause a prolonged discussion over an issue here. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the throw to first a little bit wide. Sogard's, of course, going to be you're reaching for it. There was a slight contact there. The ball gets by. Richie Martin takes off and runs to third. That, that's the end The end of it. I'm not sure. Be interesting just to have been able to eavesdrop on that. Let's see what they're going to oh, do. Wait, here. wait. Hey. Apparently, there's oh. no play. Well, the Rays might get a break out of this, but... Well, we're going to have to see what the situation was. They must have called interference on Martin. It, it, I mean, impeding uh, Sogard's ability to catch the ball. It was a bad throw to begin with. Wow. I mean, you, now that is something that I'm not surprised the manager had a discussion about. No, in fact, you're surprised that he's still in the game. I'd have lost my mind. How in the world? So instead of a sacrifice... And an E5. Davis is still in second. And here is VR breaking his bat and fouling that one. Strike one. Well, let's take a look. There's the throw. Well, here's the technicality. He is running outside the runner's lane. He was inside the runner's lane. The throw was bad. The and that's the mitigating circumstance. Well, but, but that's, here he is. Yeah, but I mean, that is not egregious. You see guys running in on the grass all the time. And by the way, <clears throat> and that's Lance uh, Barrett making that call. But see, the, the thing, too, the runner's lane, nobody runs in the running lane. You can't run in the runner's lane and touch first base. You can't do it. And here's a butt attempt, and this one is down. So a man at second, and we have no score in this game. Well, here's the point I think they would make, though. You're right about that. At some point, you have to leave the runner's lane. But I think the point they would make... But you don't leave the runner's lane. You run straight up the, the, the chalk line. Yeah, but the point is, if if you're on that line and you're in that runner's lane, if you're out of it, you, you subject yourself to that call. He was out of it all the way down the line. His, and so he's, and we've he seen it ten himself. times worse and on a throw that oh. this doesn't come into play at all. I not, mean, it's not going to argue that we've seen it worse than that. Not at all. I in mean, fact, we were both surprised that they called it. But technically speaking, he's never been in the runner's lane. But but nobody runs in the runner's lane. Tell me the next time you see a guy hit a ground ball and run in that lane and then, what, reach out with his left foot and tap that base? Well, he's, he can he, run, you, nobody, he, you don't know, run in that runner's he lane. He can run anywhere he wants to as long as there's not a play that that is affected. And in the opinion the, I mean, of the you play can't umpire. Run, you can't run in the runner's lane and touch the bag. Can't do it. Well, you can run in the runner's no. lane and then leave it and touch the bag. People, you no, can no, do no, that. No. When you hit a ground ball, Dwayne, it's straight to the bag. We're not <laughs> taking angles. I'm just telling you what's possible and not. I'm not telling you what actually happened. I'm no, but I'm you. saying that you don't run in the runner's lane. And you don't have to run in the runner's lane as long as nothing happens there. But if you're caught outside the lane and something happens, that's when the call goes against you. And that's what's happened here. Okay. So I, 
you know, it's and it's a point that's been argued forever. And you and I were surprised that they call that, particularly because of the bad throw. The long one to deep center, and that's going to be off Kiermaier's glove. The R goes to second, and now stopping at third, Davis, and they're going to get two men hung up between second and third. The R between second and third is going to be tagged out, and Davis is going to be at third, and Boy, you talk about the Orioles in a situation where Chris Davis should have scored twice in this inning, and he's at third base now. Well, here was the thing. He got no read on this fly ball. I think he was assuming Kiermaier was going to catch it. He was hanging very close to second base, and that ball off the glove, he was just he was going back to tag up. So as the ball leaves the glove, he's got no time to score. And so they were holding him up. The problem is... You've got VR running with his head down. Sloppy, sloppy beginning to this game, huh? 